Hey guys, Feeds again. I, uh, so I wanted to go over something a little bit more important today. Uh, I know I've seen a couple videos and, and talked to a few content creators kind of about uh, their, their thought process on uh, some of the systems that are in Genshin Impact, primarily the Wish system. Um, as you know, every gacha game, whether it be Raid Card Legends, AFK Clicker, um, you know, Genshin Impact, there's going to be some degree of, of, of gacha mechanic. And, and really what that means is just there's going to be a, a monetary paywall to kind of prevent you from progressing in the game. Um, in Genshin specifically, it, it doesn't really prevent you from playing the game. Um, it does limit you on some of the higher end content just because the rate in which you get new characters and new heroes uh, is simply limited at a certain point by wishes. Um, even though they tell you the statistics and the odds of getting one, and you're more likely to get several four star heroes along the way, some duplicates. Um, there's a lot of mechanics that kind of go into it, and as a free-to-play player, there's a lot of things you kind of want to look at and make decisions on, kind of based on that stuff. Um, the benefit of Genshin Impact is that they limit the need to spend money, but it's still one of those things where rolling the dice and playing the gambling mechanism can be really enticing. Um, and these are going to be some tips that I, I saw and that I've kind of figured out how to help. Uh, I've started up several alt accounts. Um, to kind of test different ways that I, that I thought would be viable um, to make them still be able to play and to do them without being super high RNG like some people uh, and pulling a whole bunch of five-star heroes and five-star weapons uh, to just some very basic mechanics to help kind of progress you through the game. There's going to be some hard stops just simply because you have to grind out certain adventure ranks, but the reality is, is that in any game, especially... Uh, a gotcha game, there's going to be some form of grind. The benefit is, is these grinds are actually relatively re rewarding when it comes to it. Um, so we'll jump right into it. Um, jump right into it and kind of show you what, what I'm talking about when we uh, when we look at these things. You're going to have uh, a variety of different things that go into it. We'll kind of first break down what is a wish. Uh, a wish is simply a mechanic that they use to help you or allow you to get certain items. So for instance, one of the events that they got going on uh, the one that gives you the opportunity to get Klee. Klee has been kind of controversial. Some people love her, some people hate her. She's great AoE, does a lot of cool stuff to it. Um, and this particular set of wishes, though, uh, it allows you to use what they call the Intertwined Fates. Um, it, there's two different types of wishes, uh, Intertwined Fates, and then the other one's going to be called uh, Acquaint Fates. Uh, and all that means is that just for different events or different things going on, Acquaint Fates are going to be primarily for the stationary or the never moving, never leaving uh, events. And then for your other ones, you'll have your intertwined fates, which are the timed events that come to it. So there's two different ones that you can get. Um, they provide a different set of different things and there's a lot of kind of fishing that goes into it. So just kind of looking at what the wish is uh, and rewards to you, if we did do the one that's for Klee, uh, what you're actually looking at is a, a variety of different heroes that you can get. It tells you the percentage of the, the drop rates. If you get a five star or four star, you have a chance of getting these characters. If you get a five star, you have a chance of getting Klee um, instead of one of the other characters. And it itemizes which ones you could potentially get. For your five stars, you get Klee, Mona, D Luke, Jean, you know, Chi Chi, and Ki Ching um, as your five star characters. And then, of course, for your four stars, if you were to get them, your highest chance is going to be Sucrose, Jin Q, and Noel. And then you're going to have a variety of different other characters that you can get along the way. These are all the four stars that are currently available. Um, that you can get um, all relatively decent heroes with de decent setups. So you don't really lose by getting one of those or getting something else. But what it means for you is that, especially if you're, if you're prone for trying to be the best possible, you're always going to look at this top tier part right here and kind of consider ways to try and capture these heroes as much as possible. Currently in the game, they don't have any other ways or formats to get those characters, um, and which is the only ways that you can do it. So that's kind of what the, the, the pay to win mechanic, if you will, that exists in it. Um, the benefit, though, is that you don't actually lose um, if you don't spend any money on your wishes. And what I mean by that is if you happen to do the game and play the game regularly, you'll get a lot of opportunities to do it. So how you get a wish is with Primo Gems. Primo Gems you can use, for, you can you can turn into um, from Genesis Crystals. Genesis Crystals are the actual currency you can buy with real dollars. Um, and it converts it one for one into Primo Gems at that point. And of course, you could do max, whatever the total amount is that you get to it. Now, they haven't rewarded any Genesis Crystals for any event so far. It's just been pure Primo Gems. Um, and really, the, the way that you secure Primo Gems is in a variety of different ways. Um, the ways that happen to be the most consistent are every day when you get your commissions, you're going to have a set of commissions that you do. Um, and those commissions will reward traditionally 10, 
10 each, so 40 pre-roll gems, and then you get another 60 from turning, I, I think it is, or, or 20 from turning. Um, so that puts you right at 60 pre-roll gems daily that you get from it. So effectively, if you do four days of uh, commissions, you'll get a wish available. That's doing nothing else that comes to it. Um, another way to secure Prima Gems is by doing the actual chapters. Um, this is the different experience chapters that are available. Um, they scale up as you do more and more of them, and they become more complicated or more intricate in doing so. Um, but for when you're first starting off, especially low rank, a lot of it's just exploration based. Opening chests, upgrading characters to 30, 40, etc. Upgrading weapons you know, a little bit, um, making sure you refine them. Very basic stuff that you're going to have to do anyways to kind of uh, kind of account for some of the power creep that gets into it. Um, but there, as you go on, you'll get higher and higher rewards. Primo gems, you get a lot of adventure rank XP to you by completing those. Uh, in this case, for instance, I have to send a character to phase five to do so um, to get the next set of, of available chapters that comes with it. So there's a lot of ways to secure it just on the, the kind of day-to-day good ways to gain. Um, some of the more intricate ways that you can get Prima Gems is by doing um, certain bosses. If they're an event, you can secure certain Prima Gems. Um, and then of course, just by exploration more than anything else, uh, you can get a ton of Prima Gems. In addition to doing the Geo Noculuses and, and the uh, Era Oculuses, um, they give you, when you turn them into the statue, they'll give you different rewards. And what I mean by the statue is the Statue of the Seven. Um, right now you only have the earth anemos and air anemos that you can turn in uh, and then you have up to 10 levels per statue you can get so every time you turn them in you'll get some uh, adventure xp you get some items typically a gem and some prima gems that go with it uh, in addition to some other stuff and of course the, the last part is your adventure rank leveling up your adventure rank gives you a lot of opportunities um, to secure your wishes um, there's a lot of different things that you get from it, from Adventure Rank, aside from just Primo Gems. You will get Ascension items, which are huge. Later on, you'll get uh, certain recipes at some levels. I think it's at level 10. They give you the sword, the one-handed sword that you can equip to probably your main character if you don't have another sword user at the time. Um, but there's a lot of different things that come with it. And just kind of looking at some of the Adventure Guide rewards, um, things that you'll get. So say, for instance, the next level, I'll get Mona, Ascension Jewel, Fragile Resin, which is huge uh, for farming stuff as well, because you'll get Prima Gems for killing some of the world bosses. Uh, and then in addition, you'll get upgrade items and so on and so forth. Um, and then, of course, at level 39, I get an actual quaint fate for it. Um, and then at level 40, you get 100 Primo Gems, Resin, which helps you farm again, and then more Ascension Materials that go into those things. There's a lot of mechanics designed to help reward you into this. Uh, and the one that a lot of people overlook is the actual achievements themselves. Um, so if you look to it, you can get a massive amount of Primo Gems just by doing the story, just by completing the game, um, doing different objectives, um, doing the, the, the quest lines, trying to be as explorative as possible when it comes to it. So you can do everything from certain regions to the Art of Adventure, where you learn different recipes. Hero's Journey, this is just basically Ascension. You know, Monstant and Liu, these are the, the quest areas within, open up the chest. Uh, and then, of course, different things like certain specialties like Elemental Specialist, Marksmanship, um, the Challenger series. And then if you have a couple friends, you can always do the Outrun stuff where it allows you to play with other people and do that. Um, but there's a lot of mechanics within the achievements that give you Primo Gems in addition to that. So there's a ton of ways to, to make free-to-play the way to go. Um, the biggest and most important thing to remember, too, is if you're trying to farm a certain character... Um, if you haven't got too deep into your account or if you're okay with it, it's actually called reroll fishing or rerolling. Um, effectively, you make an account with an, a new email and you fish for the things that you're trying to accomplish. So for instance, I've done several reroll accounts just to see what my, my RNG would look like. Some of the accounts have gotten five star characters, others have gotten just four star characters, some have just gotten duplicate ambers. Um, but it is a good way, it only takes about 40 minutes from start to finish where you need to, to be able to use all 25 wishes that they give you in addition to the, the 3,600 uh, Primo Gems that you get throughout that first little span. Um, but it is a good mechanic that allows you to potentially find what you want before you actually settle on the game. Um, as they release more and more content patches to you, you know, on December 11th, they're going to be releasing 1.1. And then on in, uh, December 4th, they're going to be releasing 1.2. Um, there's going to be a lot of things in between that allow you to do it. The reputation farms that'll help you farm some of the arrows and the geos. Uh, you'll have the ability to do some quality of life stuff. They'll give you some additional commission types. 
you'll gain some additional Primo gems from doing the reputation stuff, as well as some of the other quests that have opened up throughout that progress. Uh, and of course, as the game progresses and they release more content, there'll be more ways to farm Primo gems in the end of it. But um, I caution you, especially as someone who loves to to get involved into the uh, the the complexities of, of rolling the dice. Try to avoid spending as much as you can on it. If if you can, do do nothing at all, or or look for the best value type packages. Um, and that's simply the things that, that offer you the best opportunity for it. You spend five dollars, uh, and you get ninety uh, thirty days. You get ninety primo gems, so it gives you up to eighteen hundred primo gems or twenty seven hundred, um, you know, primo gems uh, in thirty days, which is a really strong value. Um, it's not too huge. You don't lose anything by it. And then of course, you get the opportunity to just kind of collect on it. Um, if you're to do it, you spend five dollars on a free to play game. It gives you a good opportunity to make sure you secure the stuff that you want. And then of course. Take advantage of it. And if you just happen to get really wish happy, um, at the end of it, when you do wishes just by playing the game, you actually get these star glitters that allow you to buy an unlimited amount of intertwined fates and acquaint fates too when it comes to it. So um, there's a lot of opportunity here. Um, just be smart about it. You don't. You definitely don't want to get a huge expense going into it if you can avoid it. If you've got the financial ability to, definitely take advantage of it. Um, but there's a lot of smart ways you can play the game without spending really a penny and take advantage of all the mechanics that you, you can in the game without having any issues. But anyways, that's it, guys. I uh, appreciate you tuning in. Uh, happy hunting if you guys do it. If you want to, you can always add me uh, in-game or message me on uh, on Steam or Discord or something like that or uh, YouTube or, or Twitch. And uh, if I can do anything to help you guys out or if you have any other questions, feel free to help me out. And uh, thanks, thanks for uh, tuning in. Thank you. Run. Bye. It's going to be a left click. It's going to be a left click.